my fellow Oregonians, people all, brothers and sisters, please join me in standing and giving a wonderful Oregon welcome to Yolanda Denise King. Thank you so very, very much for that wonderful introduction. I never know where to look when people are introducing me, if I should look at my feet or up in the ceiling. Or <laughs> that was so special, Mr. Hennessy. And, uh, and for that equally warm and wonderful welcome. It's great to be in Oregon. I must tell you, I really thought I was coming to a very cold, barren land. <laughs> I thought it was going to be snow everywhere and, and equally cold people. And this experience has been such a warm and wonderful one for me and Eugene last evening, um, just an incredible outpouring of what I felt was genuine acknowledgement and acceptance and, and connection. And then today um, at the high school with uh, 2,500 students and who listened, <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> and then today, I thank you so much. You I very honestly, of course, know that these times are bring with them for me a, a mixture of emotions. Um, if I had a choice, I'd love to have taken Daddy to dinner last evening. But instead, I have the honor to be connected to a tremendous legacy. For me, it is, it, it, I continue to be awed by it, to be inspired by it, and hopefully to, to be able to share with others some understanding of the responsibility that we all have to keep it going. Now that he is safely dead, let us praise him, build monuments to his glory, sing hosannas to his name, for you see, dead men make such convenient heroes. They cannot rise to challenge the images that we would fashion from their lives, and besides, it is far easier to build monuments. It is so much easier to have programs than it is to make a better world. So now that he is safely dead, we with eased consciences will teach our children that he was a great man. We will leave here today and go back to our lives of contentment and complacency, knowing all the time that the cause for which he lived is still a cause, and the dream for which he died is still only a dream. These words penned by the poet Carl Wendell Hines Jr. I think poignantly capture what I think is the crux of the matter as we come together to celebrate, to commemorate the birthday of Martin Luther King Jr. Now it is true, we have made tremendous progress and this does not discount those words, do not discount that progress. The fact that Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday is a national holiday is, reveals significant progress. In fact, it is probably one of the miracles of the 20th century that President Ronald Reagan signed the Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday Bill. He didn't want to do it, you know. Not even a little bit. Let no one fool you about that when it was a modern day miracle. Significant, important victories. The civil rights movement under the leadership of Martin Luther King Jr. served in cracking open doors of opportunity and in education and employment 
and blacks, Hispanics, other minorities, women of all races streamed in on an unprecedented basis. The civil rights movement was the inspiration for so many of the movements for human rights which followed it, such as the women's movement, the peace movement, senior citizens organized, other groups organized, because they saw through the struggle of African Americans that if they came together and organized, they could bring about change. It really raised the consciousness of the entire country and so many parts of the world and brought the South finally into the 20th century. Progress indeed. But we can't stop here. And unfortunately, to some extent, we did stop. I think many people believe that with the elimination of law enforced racial segregation, that equal opportunity for all would now be the order of the day. After all, we are an integrated society now, and all is well. We've just come out of a decade, um, really two decades, of complacency and, 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 and a time when there has been a selfish kind of spirit in this country. I think the feeling has been termed and, and perhaps uh, most clearly <laughs> defined as a time when people were grabbing the can, holding on to the can, and then sitting on that can. Feelings of, 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 uh, of selfishness, feelings of, of holding on and being responsible only for their own, that kind of lack of compassion is not America. It is not what is true to us. And I think that perhaps what I am feeling as I move around the country today, so much of what is happening in Eastern Europe, I think it's a sign of times changing. Because indeed, if we are not simply going to just let Martin Luther King Jr. safely die, that indeed, if we are going to continue that dream, each and every one of us must grab hold of it. We must shake it, we must shape it until it fills our very being. We must find something within it that we connect with because indeed there is something that each and every one of us can do to achieve the dream. It means plugging into your workplaces, perhaps. It means plugging in through your schools, through your houses of worship. However, but there is something that everyone can do. Everyone cannot be a leader or a spokesperson, but there is a task for you to fulfill, to make wherever you find yourself a bit brighter, a bit better. We must get up off of our apathy and get back to the work that's still left to be done. Oh, I'm reminded of a thought written by Edmund Burke, all that is necessary for the forces of evil to win in this world is for enough good people to do nothing. It is true in this country we have allowed a few, a measure of prosperity for a few that is unimaginable. We have created a system which allows a decent, relatively decent standard of living for many. But it is inexcusable that we allow as many people as we do to face an incredible, unimaginable, desperate lives. And America, we are too big for that. We have too much to allow that. And that is the challenge. That is the task that Martin Luther King leaves for us. If we are to be all that we can be, all that we should be, it means that we have to reach outside of ourselves just a bit more and make this world a better place because it is possible. Perhaps you are thinking, well, <laughs> it sounds great. Perhaps in some utopian future, this idea that, 
that we can build a society that genuinely nourishes life, that we can truly live together on this planet as brothers and sisters. Perhaps it does seem like a rather lovely dream during a peaceful night's sleep. But I, for one, I choose to continue dreaming, affirming with the poet Langston Hughes, hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, Life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. I choose to dream and act on my dreams, following the example that my father taught. To live with this dream may be crazy. It may be somewhat foolish. But to live without it would be a nightmare. We must not let the dream be deferred. I would like to leave you with some words from the poet Maya Angelou. Words that, while being drawn from the black experience, I think they capture the perseverance, the attitude, the kind of spirit that must exist for all of us, regardless of our ancestry, if we are to prevail. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room? Just like suns and like moons, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. Does my haughtiness offend you? Ah, don't you take it so hard, because I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may even kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like life, I'll rise. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm an ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that our ancestors gave. I am the dream. You each and every one of you are the dream. We are the dream and the hope of the brave. I rise, you rise, together we will rise. God bless you.